unbelievable. Kev's had a bit of a boo-boo with some hydraulic pipes. That's a new 6R series. This is my current aircon. One last thing on this sprayer. Morning, Holly. Here we are, we can. Good morning, hopefully the audio is going to be fixed in this video. But also I'm doing not a lot of farming today, I'm just going around checking the cows, a few other bits and bobs to do. And then I'm away to graduate from uni, which I finished two and a half years ago. Hey pal, come on in. There you go, wire in. Some people who weren't sure what happened, basically um, she ate a, a dodgy plant called St. John's wort or something like that. Bad reaction, it's called photosynthesization. It affects her skin, all the white bits are gonna go bad. I think all the hair's gonna go off, it's gonna go all scabby. Her eyes were all puffy, they're a lot better now. Um, still not great. You can see they're a wee bit, a little bit pussy and whatnot, but she can see out of them now. She's still munching grub, plenty of grub, still producing milk for the calf. What's in here? Time. Service kit, air filter, fuel filter, centrifugal oil filter type thing, oil filter. You can probably guess what's in here. Oil, 5W30, fully synth. Washer for the bung on the oil pan. More oil. And an invoice, 60 quid. Package number two. Primer for the alloys they need done. Yeah, so full service kit, I need to do that at some point. Got primer, top coat and lacquer to do the wheels. What colour do you think I've gone for? Obviously this is all for the Defender. The Three Musketeers. Someone was asking to see Cammy. He got named Cammy because the day he was born, Cammy from the sheep game came to visit the farm. Hey beast. Creep feeders, because they've just got oats in them. The calves are not that fussed for the oats, they obviously don't like them as much as barley, they love barley. So I'm just going to mix a bit of barley through the oats, just to encourage them to eat the oats. Oats are not bruised at the moment, um, the calves at this age, they can digest them. Um, whereas when they get a bit older, they can't. Uh, anyway, I'm going to mix a bit of barley through it and that will kind of encourage them to start eating it a bit. If you look around about Lulu's chops, there's probably barley in there because she's been munching barley. Daft dog, eh? This coo's desperate to get in about that barley. They'll not fit in there, pal. Saying that, they have actually started to munch away, so... This was full before, they're just taking their time. Do you mind? Hungry, aren't you? I'm going to start feeding the cows as well. The grass in this field's just, there's not too much of it. That's why she's gagging for some grub. Hey, I'll get you in a second. So if you have a look at Percy, I mean, compared to big belters of bulls, he's not a big belter of a bull. He's still young, but he's fairly slight. He's not massive, he's not massive all over, but the calves he's producing, Easy calved, and we'll go and have a look at them now. He didn't produce anything big that had to be hauled out. A few sets of twins in there as well, and they seem to be doing well. The proof will be in the pudding once they're up to kind of the 700 kilo mark and see how long it takes to get there, what quality we're getting off them in terms of fat coverage uh, and the split of what cuts you're getting and whatnot. I mean, you take a look at that beast. Doing well, growing well, nothing to complain about there. They're all doing well. They're never going to be the, the top specimen in the world anyway, but easy calved, easy to look after. I mean, if you're easy calving them, they're not under as much stress. They get away quicker, they get up and sorted out, they get milk quicker. And the cows aren't the main thing. I mean, the arable side of the farm is the main thing. So the cows are an add-on to kind of fill in winter time and things like that. So we're not wanting the hassle of really tough calving to get kind of slightly bigger calves. We're running them all the way through into the butchery. We're not needing to get early weight on them now to get a price at the market to sell them at five months of age. We're taking them all the way through, so 
it's less important to get early weight. Kev's had a bit of a boo-boo with some hydraulic pipes. These are broken, but these exact pipes I've broken myself. So this ram, there's two pipes that come off, one here, one there, into the couplers here. Long story short, um, the bail grab fell off. I've done that before, Dunk's done that before. So now Kev's had a go. So two pipes is actually not too bad. There's just that fitting there that needs replaced and one more on another pipe. I don't know whether there's like a backwashing pressure or something because we do when we couple it up, put the pins in, turn that valve position so then the pins should be locked. It's happened to me twice. Once I broke the pipes, twice I didn't. And I am cautious that I'm doing that every time because I have done it before. Right, well we'll wait and get some new pipes, AP bearings, bangers on pure radio again. There we go, job done. New fitting on there. New fitting on there. Took the boy three minutes. Easy as that, in and out in three or four minutes. Get them back, get them fitted, and we're away again. I think there was enough length in the pipe left, so we just reused the pipes. So we'll find out when it goes back on, but I was pretty confident. There's the two sheared bits. Right. There we go, working fine. Pipes are long enough, that's it fully closed, fully open. No bother. This is my current aircon. Videos are a bit all over the shop at the moment. I had uni graduation yesterday, two years late. So I wasn't doing any farming yesterday. I'm hungover today. Going down to the Highland Show tonight. John Deere kind of hosting this thing, uh, basically a tour of their, their stand. I'm going down to that tonight, so you'll see John Deere's kind of coming next. That's where we're going. Down the and then beginning at the front of the machine mill balers um, and our front end loaders. So our baler. So back in 2017, John Deere purchased his company Mazzotti, so an Italian firm who specialise in forward control self-propelled sprayers. We have four ranges. We have an M700, which is a 21 metre boom to 30 metre boom, two and a half thousand metre tank to four thousand metre tank is our mid-range sprayer. Up to what we have behind us here. Is our large frame sprayer this is the new brand new to the market this year they are 975 so seven and a half thousand liters onto the tractors now so today we have two examples of this our 8rx machine and our 7r 350. i'd like to start by talking about our 7r range here so sitting on an 11 ton chassis this actually makes this tractor quite a low low weight high horsepower machine something which we call in the industry a tractor with a very high power density this machine can be fitted with the largest of agricultural tires making it a very good option to be able to spread your weight and reduce the soil compaction throughout your field a very good example of this of spreading soil compaction is our 8rx beside us launched back in 2019 we have seen a great success of this machine with well we haven't just taken an 8r machine taken the wheels off it and put four tracks on we have designed it from the bottom up. So starting with our engine, we have lifted our engine up. Starting with our transmission, we have lifted our transmission up and also changed our front axle. All of these are things which allowed us to have a very high ground clearance of the machine. The reason for this being, when we designed the tractor, the main thing which our customer base said to us was, if we want to go away from our twin track machine, we must have the same turning circle with a four, with a four track. So by having a very high ground clearance, we are able to have a very tight turning circle. So this machine has got a turning circle of 5.4 meters. If you look at a John Deere 6155R, that has also got a turning circle of 5.4 meters. Just a bit on the, our new 6R range of tractors. But these were actually just launched this year in 2022. Brand new for, for this year and we're just starting to see the first of these new models come through into our dealers across the UK now. So much so that we were able to call the D670 our 75 ton per hour combat. Yeah. 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 1.2 fully extended, um, but it's a 3610, so you're going up to 10 metres, 3.6 ton. Uh, we've got a three stage boom on that, so the physical length of the machine is no longer than the base of the machine is a KT407. They've got a lot kicking about here, anyway. They were speaking about this 8RX, this is one of the tracks, 8R doesn't come with tracks. The square meterage of these tracks is just shy of 4 square meters. If you have it with tires, it's 1.6. 
unbelievable. So much reduced compaction on that. Definitely wouldn't end up a tractor that size, 400 horsepower, whatever it is, for us anyway, but it's very interesting to see. This baler just did a world record of 120 bales an hour. Four foot bales um, at, what was it, 220 kilo a bale. 120 an hour. Straw for us is a bit of a, it's not a hassle, but well, it kind of is a hassle. We're trying to get onto the field really quickly because we're just running the three, mil, three meter drill. We need to get on with the drill and get moving, get going. So something like that to clear the fields, that'd be amazing. That's the new 6R series. We're just starting to deliver them now with specs on it here. These are all the four cylinder models, actually. Six cylinder models around here. The combines, they've started a challenge where if any farmer wants to take on this versus their own combine and their own combine outmatches the equivalent range model, they'll get 10 grand. So the trailed sprayers, they've got these trailed ones and then and they own Mazzotti as well, they bought them not too long ago. So they've kind of started putting on their own technology into that machine. But this one, seven and a half thousand litre capacity on that. Flippin' heck. It's a bit big for us, but it'll be on the list we'll uh, consider when we get to replacing the sprayer. Right, we'll get in this, why not? There's a lot of steps getting in here. In terms of cab layout, basically, it seems like all the cabs are all the same. Well, roughly the same, so it's very similar to the demo we had. Well, they've moved all their displays onto here, so there's no actually display here. Pillar post and your screen, obviously. You're up a serious height in this. They basically redesigned this from the ground up and raised everything up, so this, this AXR will do the same turning circle as a 6155R. Here's the Kramer, or Kramer stand, whatever you call it. I'm not 100% sure how the business model works, whether John Deere own a bit of it or all of it, or they're just a partner. I'm not sure, but John Deere showing this off anyway. So this is a machine that's probably most like our JCB at home. 3610, KT3610, so 3.6 tonne to 10 metres. Ours is a 53660. So this goes another four metres, same capacity. The size of the machine is very similar to the GCB. I mean, it's quite a compact machine for reaching 10 metres. It's not fully out, but that reaches 10 metres. Quite a nice compact machine, what's it like inside? It's quite nice, similar size. Oh, there's a wee phone holder, that'll do. JCP is probably a bit nicer finished off. It's quite plasticky and stuff, but there's a lot of complaints about plastic components, but they stand the test of time a lot more. They don't rust. Yeah, okay, they can crack, which is annoying, but other than the fact that it just seems a bit less quality-wise, long-term, looks better, lasts better as long as it doesn't get cracked. All different shapes and sizes. It's quite a wee machine. What's that, KT144? What's that on the front? A wee feed hopper thing. If you're wanting to know all the specific details and all the stats, I'm not the guy for that. Cool machines, I like them. I don't remember all the stats. One last thing on this sprayer, although it's massive and we'd never buy one of these, this will fill a thousand litres a minute. So you're seven and a half thousand litres, seven and a half minutes. Unreal. So if we were to consider a John Deere sprayer, we'd go for, it'd be a 700 series or a 900 series. So this is obviously the 900 series, but it's cons. Smallest would be 4,400 litres. This probably has more bells and whistles and options you can get for it. It's, it's got more electrical kind of gizmos on it. The 700 series is a bit more mechanical, I think. But roughly that size we would be after and we'd go about 28 meters. And then as for the technicalities and all the bells and whistles, that's just purely on pricing and if we can justify those things. But all the wee individual technical bits of these sprayers now, you look at them a lot differently because the, vo the, the value of what's going into them is a lot different. So if you can save two or three percent here and there, there's a lot more value in that percentage now than there used to be. So you can justify more bells and whistles. Maybe, maybe I'm just trying to justify it to myself. As for all the other stands, I'll be here tomorrow, so I'll get more of all the other bits and bobs. Right, we're all done here. We're way off for a nice steak. So cheers for watching. See you in tomorrow's video where I'll have a tour of more of the rest of the show.